Hi, welcome to the studio. I am super excited to actually be sewing today and off the computer. So here we are, and I've got this panty cut out already. So that's what we're gonna be sewing. Okay, so if you're new to the channel or to this series, this is part four of a four part series where I go through the process of creating a physical garment starting with a digital prototype. So the four parts include creating the fabric, creating the avatar, creating the pattern, and now we're on to the actual physical garment. I was really interested in making this series because there's a lot of channels showing how to use the digital software like Clo 3D. And there's a lot of channels that are focusing on sewing. So when you're using Clo 3D, you're drafting patterns, you're making a pattern that can be usable in real life. And so I wanted to show the connection between the digital sample and the physical output. I had a few setbacks in the sewing process, but I sorted them out and I got to a really successful garment in the end. So let's get into it and let me show you what happened. I'm gonna tell you that I love you 100 times a day. Tell you that I'll miss you. I'll miss you if you go. Okay, so now I'm gonna walk you through the order of operations. So first we're gonna take our front pattern pieces and we're going to line them up right sides together along that diagonal seam. And you can see it's worth taking the time in Clo to make sure that your seam allowances align properly because now when I line up these two pattern pieces, when I line up the corners, they're perfectly aligned. Next I'll do the gusset. So I'm going to align the front and the outer gusset pieces right side together and then the right side of the lining to the wrong side of the front pattern piece and line all those edges up. And then I'm going to flip them all out. Next I'll take the back panel piece, line it up right sides together with the outer gusset. I'm gonna flip the lining under and then I'm going to line up the lining with the back pattern piece and the outer gusset. And I'm going to make sure all the other fabric is pushed out of the way. I only have the lining, the back panel piece and the outer gusset. Now I can flip it all out and we have nice enclosed seams. Next, it's time to do the side seam. So flip the panty over and line them up right sides together. Next, it's time for the pico elastic. So I'm lining up the pico elastic with the non-pico side aligned with the edge of the panty panel. And there we go. <laughs> So the pico should be facing inwards. So that will be your first pass. I'll do a zigzag towards the pico edge of that elastic. And then I will flip it down and do a second pass with the pico edge peeking at the top of the panty.
and I'll do some thread discipline here. So this is what it looked like after the first pass of elastic goes on and then you fold it down and do the second pass. And after that you would do the leg lines sewing the fold over elastic along. And unfortunately I didn't get any footage along the way but this is what the final panty looks like. You have a zigzag on the front and then on the inside you will have two rows of zigzag. The nice clean finish. And then I have a zigzag stitch finishing the fold over elastic. So here's what the final panty looked like. And did it fit? Mm, no. So let's talk about why. So I knew when I was sewing this that the elastic was stretching the garment. So as a technical designer, when you receive the garment from the factory, the first thing you do is measure it to see if it matches the intended measurements that you requested. And so I applied that to this garment as well. And I measured the waistband and the leg lines. And indeed, they were bigger than what I had planned for the pattern. You can see it's extending all the way out past the seam allowances. So this is showing that the garment is actually on the fold one centimeter bigger on each side, which is actually making it four centimeters larger than the, circum the circumference that I had planned for. And indeed, when I tried them on, they were too big. So I decided to run a few tests because I suspected that the reason why the elastic was stretching was because of the stitch settings on my sewing machine. So then I cut a few strips of fabric and elastic so that I could test different stitches changing one variable at a time. I measured and marked nine inches on the fabric and I also measured and marked eight and seven eighths of an inch on the elastic to mimic the 98% elastic reduction I had applied to the pattern. For the first sample, I used the same settings I used while sewing the garment, zigzag stitch with a length of two and a width of four. The final length of this sample was nine and a half, which means it increased by a half an inch. For the next test, I increased the stitch length to three. For this sample, the final measurement was nine and one quarter inch, which meant we're heading in the right direction. Next, I tried a length of four, which resulted in a increase of one eighth of an inch. So we're getting closer. And now I was at the limit of my stitch length options on the sewing machine. So next I tried reducing the length of elastic to figure out how much I would reduce it by. I took the previous final sample length of nine and one eighth, and I subtracted the measured elastic length of eight and seven eighths. So the new elastic length would be eight and five eighths. And voila, we arrived at a sample that was the intended length of nine inches. Yay! So here we are back in Clo, and this is the original 3D prototype and the original pattern that I used, which you're seeing right now on the screen. And before I get into the elastic reduction, I wanna talk about a few changes that I made to the pattern based on the fit. So I'm going to overlay V1 over V2. So all of these dotted lines are the new pattern that I made and all of the solid lines are the original pattern. So I'll show you the 3D prototype of the new pattern in a second here, but I'll just walk you through some of the changes that I made to the pattern. So the big obvious one for me was that the gusset was sitting too far back and I could have noticed this in Clo, but I had just missed it originally. So if I select the gusset here, so you can see how far back the gusset is sitting on the body. And if I hide the avatar, you can see that it's, it's sitting pretty far back. So I did have the opportunity to notice this in V1 of the pattern. I just didn't notice it until I actually tried it on my body. So all I did was I offset the pattern outline. So I just took this pattern outline and I offset the pattern outline. I retracted it by two centimeters, which is what you see on the dotted line here. I'm going to cancel that because I don't want to change my original pattern. And then I just made sure that the width of this front panel still matched the measurement of the width of the gusset. And the other thing I noticed was that 
on the body this side seam was kicking back a little bit which is kind of showing up in clo but i felt like it was more obvious on the body and i felt like i did have some excess fabric in the front leg line that i could remove so i shortened the length of the front leg line at the side seam by about one centimeter and then on the back i found that the rise was just a little bit low so i wanted to increase the length of the back so to increase the length of the back rise i added a little bit on at the top and i added a little bit at the bottom so you can see like i said before this dotted line is the new pattern outline here and here so i added one centimeter to the back rise. So now let's compare the differences between these two patterns. So I've set the file up so that the white garment is the old garment and the gray striped garment is the new one. So let's have a look at the gusset. The new, the new gusset line ends right here and the old gusset line ended right here. And if I look at the back of the pattern as well, the old gusset line was right here and the new gusset line is right here. So I've shifted that gusset forward by two centimeters. So at the side seam, it's more of a subtle change. I only shortened the front leg line by one centimeter. So in Clo, it's, it's kind of hard to see these subtle changes. I've set up the file so that you can see that it's moved forward a little bit, but if I shifted these garments around, um, you wouldn't really see the difference. This is more of something that you feel on the body rather than something that you can really see in Clo. And this kind of goes for the back rise as well. I only increased it by one centimeter. So just depending on how you run the simulation and how you kind of tug on the garment, it's kind of hard to see exactly what is happening. Uh, it's kind of hard to see a one centimeter difference. It would be the same thing on a human body if you were looking at the physical garment. Um, again, it's probably something that is more, more obvious in the way that the garment feels than what you can actually see in clothes. So the last thing I need to do is apply the elastic reduction and to figure out the percentage that I needed to apply, I just took the measurements from my sample so I had cut the elastic at eight and a half and the strip of fabric it was sewn to was nine inches. So I just divided 8.5 by nine, which gives you a 94% reduction. So the easiest way to figure that out in Clo is just to grab the length of the pattern. So I'm going to grab the full waistband length. So the symmetric length is 81.73. Then I make a, re a rectangle that's 81.73 three by 1.2. And then I just take that rectangle and I reduce it by 94%. And that's how I got my new elastic measurement. And I applied the same thing to the leg line elastic as well. So now with my new pattern changes made, I just fixed up the seam allowances again. I exported the pattern. And if you wanna know how to do that, you can go check out the video where I developed this pattern. And then we're back into the sewing room, cut the fabric, sew it up again, and onto the final sample, which was this time, drum roll please, perfect. So in conclusion, these are incredibly comfortable. The weight of the fabric isn't too heavy as I was worried about when I originally picked out this fabric. They have the perfect amount of stretch and recovery and the joy of taking these out of the drawer and knowing that I made this experience for myself, not only getting to wear them, but the experience of making and refining and perfecting them for me, it's so incredibly fulfilling. So here are my final thoughts on this. It is so useful to start with a digital prototype that helps to refine both the idea and fit of your garment based on real life data so that once you get to the physical development process of it, the product is already so much more refined. So the issues that I had with the V1 of my underwear were mostly mechanical issues. They were issues that arose during the sewing process. And once those were resolved and I got to the final garment, the pattern actually hadn't changed that much. So the more experience that I get both in the physical process, also in the digital process, means that I'm going through the entire process much more efficiently. 
The joy of perfectly fitting underwear that came from my own brain, crafted by my own hands, is truly a priceless experience. And if you're one of the few who stuck around with me to watch this entire process unfold, I hope I was able to convey a little bit of the magic that I felt throughout the journey. I appreciate you. I hope you learned something. And I'll catch you next time.